This was my first beginner camera and this is my current professional setup for wildlife photography. And today I just tested if I could take good photos with my old setup and compare the results with the ones taken with my current professional one. A while ago I made a short video on Instagram saying that for wildlife photography gear matters less than what most people think. People went crazy and I received tons of hateful comments. The most common remark made was Then why do you use an R5? And this kind of made me think. Will I be able to take good or at least decent photos with an old super beginner camera lens? Can I prove that the photographer matters more than the gear? So here I am with my old Canon 1300D and the Canon 55 to 250 mm lens. And this is the gear I started wildlife photography with four years ago. And this is what I'm currently using, a high-performance mirrorless camera designed for professional, the Canon R5, paired with the Canon RF 100 to 500 mm. So what matters more, the gear or the photographer? Let's find out. Good morning, it's a wonderful day here in Belgium. Not quite, but it's always a good day if we can do burp therapy. So, Let's get started. So I find my spot. I'm here on the ground. I'll now put my camera at the moment. I'm surrounded by coots, but there are also a few mallards, Egyptian geese. So let's get started with this subject. It's been so long since I've used this one. I hope that I remember how to use it. So I'll shoot in manual mode, but I also set the auto eye. So, so let's go. So I officially took my first photo back with this camera. First attempt at birds in flight failed. Well, actually, one mallard was quite focused. Well done. <laughs> so it's very, very dark and I'm already shooting at max ISO with this camera. So these photos will inevitably be darker, but there's an Egyptian goose coming. There are some mallards resting there, so I'm going to try to get closer. Maybe it will be fun to try some water shots. So I'll move my gear here and I'll sit here by the water. I just had a very, very brief encounter with a red squirrel. I just took photos with the Canon 1300D and this lens because it was very brief, so I had really no time to switch and also try with the R5. But it was very cute. I didn't think to also photograph a red squirrel with this camera. So I've been photographing now for about 30 minutes, I think. and mainly using this camera. I'm using really the R5 just occasionally just to take comparison shots. If I have to mention what I'm struggling the most with in terms of this camera, it's not the reach that much, but it's more the focusing, of course, because, you know, with the R5 and generally with the most recent mirrorless, the technology is going so fast in terms of automatic eye tracking and the eye tracking for wildlife photography is an absolute absolute game changer and the performance of the eye tracking of the R5 is absolutely wonderful. This means that I can definitely save a lot of time when I use the R5 because I know I can trust the R5 to achieve focus in a very very good manner it's not perfect all the time but then it's just a matter of fine-tuning the focus points and of course the autofocusing system of a beginner camera is completely different in this case of course there's no automatic eye tracking and i have only nine focus points i can use so it's the typical composition with the central point and then the other points around so that's very difficult and definitely I'm missing many shots that with the R5 I would definitely be able to take. Three 
hours later. Tufted ducks are normally quite shy. Uh, cooks are driving them away, of course. Definitely too far. I don't know if you can hear the cooks. Maybe not because I'm I, I have the mic. Okay, maybe I'll try to go to the other part of the lake. Uh, maybe there's this one. There's normally often a swan family in this park and I recently saw one of the adults. So I'm going to get there. Honestly, the day couldn't be more grey than this. It's terrible. There's not a single hint of colour. So what I'm thinking now... Oh, Jay! What I'm thinking now is that the photos don't look nice but also the ones taken with the r5 it's actually very difficult to take photos with character in these conditions because it's gray it's windy so there's lots of textures on the water i'm not sure this was the right day to make this test but i wanted it to be authentic so this is actually a day a typical day that you may find as I also often find living in Northern Europe when I do bird photography so this is it this is what we get and this is what we're testing guys also now it's drizzling so my glasses will become dirty well they already are so I don't like that I don't like that so now there's more that just drizzle. It's actually raining and this camera is totally not weather sealed. Also, I don't have the hood, so the rain is going right on my lens and I have to clean it continuously. I think I have to interrupt my test. I'm actually not sure how this went and also I'm not sure, <laughs> absolutely not sure what would be the conclusion of this. I mean, I have some ideas of what would be the final message of this video, but I'll wait to get home, sit on my laptop, go through the photos to let you know. So we're back home, I went through all the photos, I made a selection, I also edited a few of them and put everything together to make the comparison easier. So let's get started. So you saw already what happened in the field, a bit of vlog style, perhaps you already understood which were the challenges that I faced in the specific session. And this is what we're going to see now together. So first of all, very, very briefly, I'll touch upon the gear specification. Then we will have a small photo quiz. Basically, I'll show you two photos which are very similar to each other. You have the time to try to figure it out yourself. Then I'll also put a bunch of other photos taken with the Canon 1300D, so the beginner camera, let's say. So there will be more results for you to see also with the settings if you're interested. I will also show you some raw files taken with the 1300D mainly. This is because I want you to understand also the role of editing. And finally, we will try to put everything together, discussing which are at the end the real factors that affect photo results is it the gear? Is it the photographer? Is it something else? What really was important when determining the results of this specific session? This is where we're going, so let's start! So I put here the very basic specification regarding the two cameras. You can see, the first of all, the Canon 1300D, which I think for the US market is the Canon Rebel T6, and then on the other side, the Canon R5. So we're talking, of course, of very different cameras. These cameras could not be more different. We have the 1300D, which is a DSLR, and the R5 is a mirrorless camera. The R5 is a full-frame sensor camera, whereas the 1300D is a crop sensor camera. The autofocus system also is hugely different. Basically, with the R5, the autofocus covers virtually all the frame, 100% of the frame, plus the R5 has eye tracking, which is obviously a game changer when it comes to wildlife photography. None of this is available on the 1300D, which has a nine point autofocus system. So perhaps it's not surprising that this also comes 
with a price different. I think now that the Canon 1300D paired with the lens that I used in this case, the 55 to 250 millimeter is about at 500, 600 euros. So also dollars, you can immediately make the conversion. Whereas with the Canon R5 paired with the Canon RF 100 to 500 millimeter, we are at about 7,000 euros slash dollars. So this is more than 10 times difference in price. So now we can actually see the photo results. Let's go, I'm excited. So we saw that on paper, these cameras and lenses are actually very, very different. But now it's time to go to the juicy stuff. Let's see the photo results. So welcome to the photo quiz part. As mentioned here, you're going to see every time a set of two photos. One photo was taken with the Canon 1300D and the other photo was taken with the R5. And I'll give you a bit of time to look at the photos and make your judgment. And then I'll actually show you which one was taken with which camera. So these are really the first results taken immediately after arriving. And it's time to reveal that the first photo was taken with the R5 and the one on the other side is the 1300D. So already now you will have to excuse me if actually the photos are not exactly the same across the two cameras because I immediately realized that it was quite difficult to replicate exactly the same photo because I wasn't in a controlled setting, I wasn't in a hide, so the birds were moving around all the time, there were also people passing by, so it was hard to really have exactly exactly the same scene and using both cameras at the same time. Also because I, I'm not used to that, I normally use only one camera at a time, uh, but I hope that this is still reasonable in terms of comparison. So, so let's move to the new one. This is again and Parisian coats, slightly different scene because the one in the top was actually taken against another type of background. It was on the on the other side. It was still in the same place. And this is how these were taken. We move now to another subject, an amazing feral pigeon. So in this case, we have two photos. Also, these are slightly different in terms of background. I have to make a small disclaimer. So how were these photos processed? So what I've done, all the photos coming from both the R5 and the 1300D have been edited only using Lightroom Classic. What I've done is using the denoise for all the photos and then I've done really really minor editing. I think that for each one of these photos I took less than one minute because editing was not my priority in this case. So you know the goal of this video was really have a rough comparison. In this case this is how these photos were taken. So R5 and the 1300D. Now we move to these small arts, which perhaps you also saw in the video. Also again here, you have to excuse the, the difference in the two photos, but this is also like a hint towards how the photos were actually taken. So let me show you. So the first photo was taken with the R5, the other with the 1300D, and there are actually two major differences in these two photos. So the first difference is actually regarding the focus, because for the photo taken with the R5, I was actually focused on the female mallard in the foreground. Whereas if we look at the photo taken with the 1300D, in this case, you actually notice that the female mallard is more blurred, whereas the male mallard is more in focus. So first of all, this is already a difference in the two photos, but then the other major difference is actually the perspective I took this photo from. So you can see that in the photo with the R5 there's much more foreground. The reason for this difference is really not a mistake but is actually that I couldn't really replicate the same photo as this one with the 1300D and this is relates to the fact that the 1300D doesn't have the tilt screen. So what happened in this session is that I wanted to be eye level with the subjects but I couldn't. Why? Well, because it was really muddy, it was still very wet because it rained the previous days and I just didn't have the right outfit to be on the ground. With the R5, what I can do, even when I can't completely be on the ground, I can still put my camera and then just flip the tilt screen and use the tilt screen to achieve focus and compose the scene. I just couldn't do it with the 1300D, meaning that I just took the photo from a higher point of view, which of course results in a slightly different photo and of course has also general implication for the photo result. This is a group of three photos that I took and I know that they're very small, then I will enlarge and put them side by side because if you realized in the blog what I was complaining about and frustrated about was actually the weather and specifically the lack of light. It was a very, very dull morning. It was super overcast. Then you saw it also started raining and I just struggled to find any colors, which I really wanted to find. So then when I was moving from one spot to another, I actually spotted this plant, this red plant, which was very interesting because I found some colors and it was also cool that there was some reflection in the water. So I decided to use that scene to work with and I took these three photos. Now, in terms of 
the actual photo results. I think that here it's very clear how the Canon R5 surely had an edge over the 1300D when it comes to being able to pick up on colors in such low light conditions. So you can see the first photo taken with the R5, the other one taken with the 1300D. No matter how much I tried to edit, it was just really, really hard to make the colors come back from the photos taken with the 1300D. And this is just normal when, it, when we think about the specifications of the R5. Overall, from the R5, despite the low light condition, despite it was very overcast, I was still, be, I was still able to bring back the colors as they were in the scene in front of my eyes. This is because we have to remember that no matter how powerful your camera is, your human side will always be superior to any camera. So then you can also think about the job of a photographer, especially when you're editing the photo, as your job to be able to bring back the scene and the colors to contrast right as you saw in the scene. So here you can see also anyway, different subjects. We have Eurasian Kutzen here. There was actually a little grip which stayed there literally just for the second that I took the photo. If you're familiar with little grips, they really like to dive and then they disappear very very quickly okay so now we move to the next photo here so we have other subjects with egyptian geese which unfortunately are alien species here uh, so not so cool if you were listening to the previous part of the video you will actually be able to understand which photo was taken with which camera based on the different perspective right so now i'm already telling you i should not do this because indeed you have on the left the 1300D taken because I couldn't just go lower whereas with the R5 I did something very similar to what happened with the Mahler scenes but then overall in terms of photo results I would not say that these are actually extremely extremely different so until now we all saw photos which were quite natural also in terms of editing but I also wanted to then compare more advanced editing styles. So in this case, I went for a low key look because I on purpose underexposed the background in post production, bringing it to be basically pure black. And this is a very good way to handle situations where you just have a background that you don't like when the light is not amazing and you want the, your subject to stand out. So I took these two photos and these are the cameras, the gear they were taken with. So on the left, you have this Canada goose taken with the 1300D and on the right, you have a photo taken with the R5. I must say that between these two I really like the one with the black-headed gulls taken with the R5 of course I have to say that here the R5 generally has a big advantage when it comes to birds in flight thanks to the eye tracking so it's much more easy to get this type of photo so in this case I was just following this gal uh, while it was flying away and then he decided to land on the water so I just kept tracking the gal and then I decided to select this photo in the which is the moment of the splash in the water which which is quite nice to replicate something similar in the 1300d it would have much been much more difficult I have some birds in flight later on also taken with the 1300d to share but not in the um, low-key style but I had this Canada goose which of course it's much different to, in terms of making it easy to achieve focus of course because this is a subject that was just calmly floating on the water and then when moving from one spot to another i saw this common wood pigeon on this tray in case you don't know i really love common wood pigeons i was just walking and this is right the opposite example of the low key editing style that we saw before, this is more of an high key style, which is also a style that I go for often when I have these very dull gray white sky. So in this case, you do the opposite. So you intentionally overexpose to achieve this pure white. So this was a common wood pigeon just on the tree. So again, the perspective is not amazing because I was down below. I took these two photos and this is how they were taken. So the first one is taken with the 1300D the other one with the R5. I have to say that here, I think that the edit is also slightly, slightly different. There's way more shadows in the one taken with the 1300D and I actually like more this edit versus the, versus the photo taken with the R5. So we move now to another subject. We go back to a more natural style and take your time to think about, just notice. In this case, the perspective doesn't help because more or less taken in the same. And this is the answer. I'm not sure if you guessed correctly. So the one here on the left was taken with the 1300D. The one on the right was taken with the R5. Also in this case, I actually don't think that there are huge, huge differences when it comes to the photo result. And here it's other birds in flight that I wanted to show. So as mentioned before, I said that the R5 surely, surely gives a big, big advantage when it comes to birds in flight, thanks to the eye tracking. This doesn't mean that it's not possible to take birds in flight photos also with the 1300D. 
Of course, with the 1300D, it took more effort to get photos that were in focus. It was much harder. Of course, I have to admit it. But it doesn't mean that with the 1300D, so with a camera that costs 10 times less, you can't take photos of birds in flight. So these are two examples of quite similar things for two different individuals. And the one on the left was taken with the R5, the one on the right was taken with the 1300D. So I hope that the part with the photo quiz was interesting and of course let me know in the comments if you were right in guessing which one was taken with the R5 and which one was taken with the 1300D. I'm, I'm very curious to hear how did it go. But now we can move to other examples. I want to show you other photos taken with the 1300D and again we're going to talk about some elements and some of the challenges that I faced when using these beginner setup. Out of all the photos taken with the 1300D, I think that this one of this common Morhen would be my favorite one. So you can see that I was able to go pretty low, but again, it's not water level anyway. What I like about this photo is that it's perhaps the only one where I was able to get some colors out of it. So you have the bird just passing in front of me. And what's also quite nice that you can also spot perhaps some of the raindrops going around. This wins personally for me the prize of the best photo taken during the sessions with the 1300D but let me know in the comments if you agree. This is another example with the same subject as before again a common more hand this doesn't fit the common rule of being eye level also in this case I quite liked the level of texture of the water and especially the reflection coming from the vegetation also you can see that there's kind of these round circles going around which I think helps in framing the bird even if it's not an eye level photo and also here I think that the pose of the bird is quite nice with the engaging eye so I ended up also quite liking this photo taken with the 1300 and this is the last photo that I wanted to share taken with the 1300D is a red squirrel again I, I took it only with this camera because it was when I was moving from one location to another so the R5 was in my backpack I wanted to share with you although this is definitely not a photo that I would for example post on my account because there are quite a few mistakes in here for example I don't think that I properly focused on the squirrel I think that the focus was rather on the on the tree also there's a lot going on in both the foreground and the background but I thought to share because anyway rest squirrels are too cute not to be shared we saw already quite a few photos and we discussed that one of the major challenges faced in this specific session was actually the lack of light. This means that for many photos I actually had to use very high ISO, an ISO that I would definitely consider a danger level ISO zone for this specific camera, the 1300D. So I wanted to share how these photos look like in RAW formats. So this is the Mallard, you can see taken with ISO 6400 and this photo has definitely some noise but I also wanted to quickly show you how nowadays even very high ISO are actually quite easy to deal with. I'm not saying that this photo will turn out perfectly after the denoise but it's definitely a very good feature. To clarify all the photos that I showed you here as I mentioned were only briefly edited by Electrum Classic and also the denoise step is only made via the noise reduction tool currently available in Lightroom. So it's here the denoise so for both most of the photos taken with the 1300D I used an amount of denoise of about 70 which is somewhat higher than the one that I normally use which is more towards the 50. This is how I put it for most of the editing of the photo and then enhancing you will now see the results. Of course the denoise step results also in loss of detail but that's just a compromise that comes when you have to shoot with this high ISO. But Anyway, as you've seen also in the photos that I showed you before, it doesn't mean that the photo was really, really terrible. So these were the photos taken with the two setups we compared. I showed you quite a few examples, but now it's time to try to bring everything together. So after this experiment, if someone would ask me, which are the factors that can affect photo results? Let's start first from a general overview. So obviously when it comes to the elements that are important when we think about which are the photo results that you can achieve, we have the gear. That's all the point of the video, that's where everything started. So of course the camera and the lens. But then we have also all the elements that are about the photographer. Each photographer comes with its own set of technical skills. When I say technical skills, I specifically refer to the ability of the photographer of actually using the camera. So really manual skills, but also the capacity of adapting the settings depending on the scene itself. Then there's also something that I call the eye training because it's basically the ability of the photographer of 
really seeing the scene and seeing the opportunities that a scene provides. So it's not just about being able to find birds, of course, that's also a part of it, but also the ability of interpreting the scene and make something out of it. Then, of course, there's also the artistic vision of the photographer, because at the end of the day, photography is a form of art. So also the artistic vision, the creativity of the photographer plays a significant role. Then I also put mood because anyway, many of these factors are connected to each other, but I think that everyone has experienced sometimes going out for photography and just not feeling like doing it. It's about motivation. It's about mood. It's about inspiration. So also that plays a role. And I think that during some sessions, you will just be more productive because you're just in a better mood and mindset. And then, of course, very important is also the editing skills and the style. As you've seen here, we saw a bunch of photos that were edited. It wasn't heavy editing, as I mentioned, it was really briefly, but here as well, even if two people use the same gear, go to the same location and they have the same technical skills, a difference can be made based on their editing technique and approach. But are these the only factors affecting a photo result? I don't think so. And I think that this experiment really proved it. So of course, there's also everything related to the scene itself. When it comes to the scene, of course, you have the subject because there would be times where perhaps you go out for taking photos and the subjects are just not there. So then, of course, you could be the best photographer out there. You could have the most professional gear out there. But if the birds or the wildlife is not there, you will not take great photos are you? The second thing is, of course, also the behavior of the subjects, because sometimes inevitably there will be times where the subjects just do things that are more interesting, perhaps, versus other times. And then, of course, a big important role is the location. When it comes to location, of course, the location is also directly connected to the subject. So there will be locations that have more subjects. But when it comes to location, I'm also thinking about other elements like the accessibility, how busy it is, if you can be disturbed by other people. So and how many distracting elements are around. So all of these can really play a role when it comes to your photo result. And then there's another final bucket that it's other and it's at the end, but it doesn't mean that it's less important than the others, quite the opposite, I would say, which is the light, of course, in terms of the amount of light and the light characteristics. And of course, the light is also then connected with the weather. And also I put time in terms of time availability, because of course it changes. If you just have, you know, one hour session, it's different versus a person that has maybe one month to try to achieve a certain photo result. So I tried here to summarize the factors that I think generally affect the photo results. But if you have other ideas, of course, add them in the comments, because I'm very curious to know if people mention other things. So when it comes to the specific session, the one of this morning where I went out and I mainly used the Canon 1300D in that scenario with the weather, with those birds, you, you have the, you have an idea of what happened because you saw the videos, which were the main players in this case for this specific session. And I tried uh, during the video to show you the photo results. I highlighted some of the elements, I highlighted some of the challenges, but I tried not to share so much my personal perspective and opinion because I wanted to give you the freedom to just think about it. So this would be how I would score the different players for the results of this photo session. The camera and the lens definitely play a role. Why? Because I think that overall I was able to achieve with the 1300D similar photos to the one taken with the R5. However, it's also true that with the R5, there were some advantages like the tilt screen, but also, for example, the eye tracking. So, of course, the camera and lens definitely have a role, but are they the major factor? I wouldn't think so. I think that the photography skills, meaning the technical skills of the photographer, so the ability of actually using the camera, but also the ability to find the birds, the ability to see the scene. So in this part, I'm also now adding the eye training part. I think that those skills really, really play a significant role because at the end of the day, if I would have given the R5 to a person without the same photography skills, I'm pretty sure that that person would have not taken photos that are similar to these ones. I've also decided to add specifically for this session editing skills because for these specific photos, editing was actually fundamental because the photos coming out from the 1300D were 
in some way recoverable and they gave good results, I would say, but editing was really important and also editing had to be done in a certain way. Although I must say that in this case, it was still a very minimal edit. It wasn't in depth. As I said, I spent less than one minute per photo, but editing was really important specifically for this session. There will be some other sessions where maybe the editing is not as important actually, but I think that in this specific session, what really made a difference in terms of the results and what I was able to achieve, but even more important, what I wasn't able to achieve is actually the light and the weather or better the lack of light and the, the rainy, really overcast weather. Now you can say, of course, with the Canon 3900D, I was even more limited and I struggled gold even more. That's true because as I mentioned before, the 1300D is not weather sealed. I didn't have the lens hood, but the truth is that even when looking at the photos taken with the R5, although they can be considered maybe better because of course they are sharper, there's more level of detail. Still, in this case, even with the R5, I actually didn't take extremely good photos. So it's really not a matter of the gear. The photographer was the same because it was myself, but here the major role was actually the light. I know that many people say there's no such a thing as bad light. That's true. I mean, you can potentially work with every lighting scenarios. And at the end, I also did it. But then when it really comes to understand which are the photo results and how they are affected, in this case, I would say that the light really played a major role. The other thing that also played the major role, I know that it might sound as a minor element, but the fact that I didn't really go eye level, specifically in the case with the 1300D, that was only my limitation on that session. It's just because I didn't feel like, because I didn't want to uh, get wet, because I didn't have the right coat, but potentially I could have done it. So this is again, just a way to make you understand that sometimes there are factors that are just overlooked, but that actually can make a huge, huge difference when it comes to photography. So I wanted to conclude this video trying to find the answer to the question that was raised at the beginning. What's more important, the gear or the photographer? Well, I think that the result of this experiment was not exactly what I expected, but it was also a way to remind myself that perhaps it's neither the gear and it's neither the photographer because in photography there are so, so, so many factors that sometimes we just tend to forget, but they actually are really, really important. At the end of the day, personally, I still think that with the Canon 1300D, I was able to take photos which were very similar to the one taken with the R5. None of the photos were price worthy. Not many of these photos, for example, I would have posted on my account, but I think that it was still a very good exercise to prove also just to myself that at the end of the day, I think that the photographer is still more important than the gear itself. When I firstly made the video on Instagram that sparkled all the comments, my main message was not that gear doesn't matter at all. The gear inevitably has limitations, but it's also true that every piece of gear has limitations. Also the Canon RF 100-500 millimeter has limitations when you compare it with a prime lens that costs three times more. The major goal was just actually showing to people that it's not true that the photo result is immediately related to the gear. Of course, gear has limitations. That's, that's obvious. Otherwise there will not be pieces of gear that cost 300 euros and other ones that cost 3000 or lenses costing 20,000. Of course, there's a difference, but people can work around these limitations. It's just important to understand the limitations and just investing time on developing all the other skills that are involved. When I showed you the factors that play a role when it comes to photo results, there's a bunch of... So it might be that you have a camera, a lens, which maybe is just a beginner setup, but at the same time, you can work on improving all the other skills that are involved in photography. You can improve your technical skills. You can improve your editing skills. You can become better at finding birds. You can become better at getting closer to birds. You can become better at learning compositions, cropping, how to work with light. You can invest more time practically in the field. There's all a bunch of activities that you can do to 
compensate in some way limitations of your gear that inevitably will be there. The reason why I wanted to make this video is actually I hoped to achieve a positive message because sometimes it's so easy to go out on social media and seeing all these photos taken from people who maybe have much more expensive gear than the one that we have and it's very easy to fall in the trap of immediately believing yeah that person took that photo just because it has that piece of gear after today i want to encourage you to take a step back from that thought because i think that that's just a wrong belief that many people have i think that we don't have to hide behind the excuse of gear this doesn't mean that gear doesn't have limitation and of course this doesn't mean that if you feel like it you don't ne you never have to upgrade gear there will be definitely moment when you would feel you have completely outgrown your gear and it totally makes sense to upgrade otherwise people will never upgrade right it's just part of the normal progress it's just part of the learning journey in wildlife photography what i'm saying is that if you're a beginner if you just started if all you have is a beginner camera if all you can have for the next five years is that camera it doesn't really matter you can still be a successful wildlife photographer with what you have but it takes some work so we touched on many many aspects today and if you want to let me know your thoughts about the photo quiz about the aspects playing a role in bird photography wildlife photography of course drop a comment because i'm extremely curious to know your thoughts and of course, in case you've not done it yet, remember to subscribe to the channel because there's quite a few interesting videos coming up. The next one will actually be again an editing video. Mm -hmm.